With the biggest Spider-Man movie of all time coming out, I figured it'd be fun to try and find who I think is the Spider-Man of the NFL. Well, first and foremost, Spider-Man is a young dude that quickly has to become a superhero because of the death of Iron Man. So he has to be a young stud. If you think about who Iron Man would be, I think someone like Tom Brady is the best match because it has to be someone that's the best of the best. Not just that, but he's also older and kind of passing off the torch a bit, even though Brady is still good. Anyways, you get the point. I think it would only make sense that Spider-Man would be the next generational talent. To say that picking the next best player in football is easy is far from the truth considering how talented a lot of these young studs are. But no matter the case, here we go. Although there are a ton of great young talents all over the football field, I think Spider-Man would probably be a quarterback. In a league full of great talent, that makes this a bit tricky, but I think it makes sense. Okay, so now we gotta think of the best young quarterbacks. We got obviously Mahomes, Josh Allen, Lamar, Kyler, Herbert, Burrow, Derek, and I guess Dak. A decent bit to choose from, but I think we can eliminate a few from the get-go. Spider-Man has to be the best of the best, so guys like Dak, Burrow, Derek, and honestly Lamar have to go. These guys are studs, but I wouldn't put them in the best of the best category. With that in mind, we're left with Mahomes, Josh Allen, Kyler, and Herbert. All super duper great players that have a promising future ahead of them, just like good old Spidey. But if we were going to have to move ahead, we got to eliminate some fellows right off the bat. Of the bunch, the ones that I think have the least chance of being that guy are Josh Allen and Kyler Murray. If it wasn't for their lackluster play recently, I wouldn't say this. But you get the point. This leaves us with Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert. Two guys in the same division and both legends in the making. It's really tempting to go with Mahomes, but Spider-Man is an under the radar type of guy who was never seen as the dude until just now. I know Mahomes wasn't a big shot at Texas Tech, but I think Justin Herbert fits the role better. If you think about it, Justin has to work with much less and is pretty much on his own like Spider-Man is without Iron Man. Out of Oregon, no one really believed in Sherbert, so I think he's the perfect guy to fill the role. Okay, so now that we got our Spider-Man, let's try and assemble the fellows around him. In the recent movies, the three people closest to Spider-Man are MJ, Aunt May, and his trusty pal Ned. Although it's tough to align with football players, let's see what we can do. Herbert may only be in his second season with LA, but already he has established a pretty great dynamic with some of the studs on the offensive side. From top to bottom, there's a lot of talent but I would say that his best friend on the football field seems to be a certain Keenan Allen. Although Ned and Keenan are very different people, in terms of their relationship to the quote unquote Spider-Man, it's very similar. Both of these dudes help their bud defeat foes in their path. For Ned and Peter, it might be supervillains, while on the other side it's NFL teams for Keenan and Justin, but the same idea remains. Next on the list is Aunt May, and you could probably guess that it would be his mother, but we were talking football, and so I think it would only make sense that it would be Brandon Staley. His quote unquote mentor on the football field helps him be his best time and time again just like Aunt May does for good old Peter. All these comparisons and talk may seem a bit whack, but I don't really care. So let's try and find Justin's MJ. Now again, I know he's in a relationship, but this is a football partner I'm talking about. So I think it would have to be good old Eckler. Together the two are able to manage the offense, and whenever Justin isn't able to do anything, good old Austin is there to help him. They may not be lovers like Peter and MJ, but they work really well together on the football field, and so I think they fit the roles pretty well. Although not a central figure, I think Rashawn Slater would be great as Happy Hogan. He's an underrated talent who is able to look out for Justin just like Happy does for Peter, so I think it's a perfect fit for the stud. Now that we've talked about all the good guys, I think it's time to talk about the villains. Pizza time. There aren't really any actual villains in the NFL, except a few fellows that I will ignore for this. But it doesn't mean that there aren't people that play a similar role in Herbert's quest for Lombardi. He may have just beat him for Rookie of the Year, but I don't think Joe Burrow is going out without a fight. Although Justin and the Chargers smacked the Bengals when the two faced off against each other, I doubt it's the last time the two will square up. For Joe, I think a good comparison is a villain that may lose time and time again, but will always come back fighting like Green Goblin. Now I haven't watched the movie yet, and please don't spoil in the comments, but the two have fought each other in different forms for decades on the movie screen and even more in the comics. Throughout that time, Goblin has taken important people from Peter, just like Joe might do by winning games against the young stud and Herbert. 
The difference between the Goblin and Joe is the age, and so I think he's likely more of a Harry Osborne Goblin, but for what it's worth, he fills the role. Next up to bat is Patrick Mahomes as Dr. Octavius. Instead of having metal arms that are insane to go up against, Mahomes has studs all over the football field and KC that make it hard to beat for Justin. This may be a bit of a stretch Armstrong, but I think it works because Doc Ock is super OP in the movies and usually beats Peter just like Mahomes does to Justin. And eventually, just like Peter does in the movies, I think Justin has what it takes to prevail in the near future. Whether it's a divisional game or a conference title or anything in between, I think he'll beat Doc Ock and prove that he belongs on the same level eventually. Although there's a ton of more villains to choose from, I'm just going to talk about one more to finish this off. Of the bunch, I think the funniest comparison is Tyrod Taylor as Electro. The whole idea behind Electro's character is that he's initially friends with Peter until Spidey forgets about him and takes his limelight. A similar scenario played out in LA when Tyrod punctured his lung and in turn lost his job to the young stud. As opposed to how Electro actually did some damage to Peter, I don't know how well Tyrod and the Texans will perform against Herbert, but the fact that the two are playing against each other a few days after this video drops I think is pretty funny. No matter the case, even though Justin has his own rogues gallery to go up against in his NFL career, he has a lot of help behind him to do some awesome stuff. Comparing a young star like Justin Herbert to a superhero like Spider-Man may seem a bit wild, but I hope you had fun going down the rabbit hole with me, and comment down below who your Spider-Man in the NFL is. If you enjoyed, let me know what videos you want next, and if you like these kinds of videos. Just like Spider-Man, Justin Herbert is quickly becoming a hero in his own right in LA, but thankfully he doesn't have to worry about supervillains every Sunday. Herbert fires back to the end zone and is caught for the touchdown. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed, comment down below your thoughts, subscribe for more stuff like this, and please don't spoil the movie for those who haven't seen it. But anyway, see you all soon and peace out.